Hey everybody, Brandon Carroll here, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to configure NAT, dynamic uh, network object based NAT, on an ASA running 8.3 code using ASDM. It's a very simple process, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to configuration inside my ASDM interface. The next thing that I want to do, there's actually more than one approach that we can take, but the approach that I'm going to take is I'm going to build the network object groups first, uh, or actually the network objects, and then I'm going to tie those into the NAT statement. So I will add a network object. I'm going to call this internal, and this is going to be a subnet, or a network, I should say. And my internal network is 10.0.206 dot uh, zero and I'll give it a subnet mask here I can just pick that from the drop down real easy to do Click OK there I'll add another network object this is going to be the range of addresses that I'm going to translate people to so I'm going to call this my cool and this is going to be changed to a range the starting address is 192.168.206 dot 10, 192.168.206.20 and I'll call this NAT pool or at least I'll give it the name NAT pool. So I've got internal in my pool, I'll go ahead and apply that. You can see the objects that are going to be pushed out. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to NAT rules. Under NAT rules I'm going to click on add. The source interface is the inside, the destination interface is the outside, so now I know between which interfaces I'll be doing translations, and I'm going to select the source address field, and I'm going to pick my internal address space. I could have left it set to any, but if I had multiple subnets behind there and I wanted to control which translated pool they go to, I'd want to make sure I picked a, a network object for my source addresses like I did here. The destination address can be anybody, it doesn't matter who I'm making connections to or what service it is. The source NAT type is going to be dynamic NAT and the source address is going to be translated to my pool. I click on OK here. Don't care about the destination address or the service, so I'm not translating any of that. Um, any other options here, I don't need to translate the DNS replies at this point and I can call this my first NAT rule. And I'll click OK. And now we can see that the NAT rule has been added to my list of NAT rules here. It's the only NAT rule I have right now. It's a network object NAT. And I'll go ahead and apply this. You can see the NAT statement as it's going to be sent out to the ASA or applied to the ASA. Okay, so we know it's dynamic. I'll apply that, and at this point we can test. So let's go ahead and open up a command prompt. Let's telnet to our gateway, which is 192.168.206.1. Translations should take place, and I'm logged in. Now the next thing you're probably wondering is how do I verify this on the ASA. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ASA's command line and see if we can see the translation there. And here's our ASA. We'll do a show xlate and we can actually see we have a NAT from the inside at 10.0.206.10 to the outside 192.168.206.12 which is one of the addresses that's in the pool. And we're good to go. We can see the translations functioning. We could also, if we wanted to, enable logging. Login console 7. We can clear our xlate. That drops the translation. Now let's go back and make our telnet connection again.
So we'll tell that. And then when we come on back over to the ASA, we can see here that we built a dynamic translation and made the connection. So again, that's how easy it is just to create a dynamic NAT translation using network objects. It looks a little bit different in the code for the command line, somewhat different, but a little bit of a little bit of repetition and you'll have it down pat. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope to, in the future here, get a little bit more video tutorials up on the blog, something a little more active. I appreciate your comments, and uh, let us know. Let me know if there's anything specifically that you'd like to see. For now, I'm just going to continue with various configurations of the ASA run at 8.3 code. Thanks for watching.